Hello, this is your daily devotion for Monday, November 9th, and our reading comes to us from 2 Chronicles chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Then King Solomon prayed, Lord, you have chosen to live in clouds and darkness. Now I have built a majestic temple for you, a place for you to live in forever. All the people of Israel were standing there. The king turned to face them and asked God's blessing on them. He said, Praise the Lord God of Israel. He has kept the promise he made to my father David when he said to him, From the time I brought my people out of Egypt until now, I did not choose any city in the land of Israel as a place to build a temple where I would be worshipped, and I did not choose anyone to lead my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as a place where I will be worshipped, and you, David, to rule my people. And Solomon continued, My father David planned to build a temple for the worship of the Lord God of Israel, but the Lord said to him, You were right in wanting to build a temple for me, but you will never build it. It is your son, your own son, who will build my temple. Now the Lord has kept his promise. I have succeeded my father as king of Israel, and I have built a temple for the worship of the Lord God of Israel. I have placed in the temple the covenant box, which contains the stone tablets of the covenant, which the Lord made with the people of Israel. So what drew me to this passage for today is how it talks about how a person might begin something that someone else will have to complete. It's often said that what separates us from the animals is that we have a sense of the past and of the future, whereas animals really don't. They don't understand that there was a world before they came. They don't understand there will be a world after they were gone. But we do. We have history, and they don't, so far as we know. This passage talks about how a son had to realize a father's dream, vision, and mission. And Solomon's great pride in delighting, in completing the work that his father began. Many times in life, we take on huge burdens, and particularly in the church, we often take on huge burdens because we believe if we don't do these things, no one else will. A lot of the time, we're right. But we also have to realize that sometimes God plants a seed through us that someone else is going to have to harvest. And in the same way that previous generations worried and were concerned, will the faith survive? Will my grandchildren and their grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren grandchildren still worship in this place or at least somewhere? And the answer to that question has been yes. Yes. The world was here before us. The faith was here a long time before us. It will survive us. That means it's okay for us to have some unfinished business in life. It's okay for us to delegate things to others, including even future generations, and to simply focus on what's in front of us and what we can do. Of course, David would have loved to build the temple, but I think David was more happy to know that the temple would be built than it was that he would do it. And I think we can learn a lot from that. It's not about us, but it's all about the mission. It's all about ensuring that God's will is done. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of history that tells us there was a time before us. And we thank you for the gift of the future, letting us know that the world will keep going after we have returned to you. Help us to deal effectively with whatever unfinished business there may be in our lives. Help us to tie down all the loose ends we can before our time passes, but also to understand that some of the work that we have begun in life will be unfinished, and we need to train those who will come after us and charge them with ensuring that it is completed. And for those who have large things passed down to them, we pray as well for the wisdom and the guidance to see them through. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon.